Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, First Park. Good morning, Zoom watchers. God is good. Amen. And his mercy endureth forever. Yes, sir. It's so good to be here this morning. I know y'all feel pretty good. You slept all night. You woke up this morning with the Lord on your mind. Amen. There's a scripture I want to read. Psalm 95, a few verses. I was reading this morning in my devotion. The Lord moved on my heart this, to say some things, to think of some things that we do. Psalm 95, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. It does not sound to me like a suggestion. Does it sound like a suggestion? Which, oh, which of the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Oh, come let us sing it to the Lord. This sounds like a command to me. The world, you know, the world do things that we uh, pay attention to and we are, they, be, they be doing the, uh, the imperfect things. They'll tell us, do not go into this store unless you wear your mask. We'll stop when we put on our mask. The Bible says, enter to my gates with thanksgiving. Do we stop and say, do we do that? The world has some things they do. The church ought to be doing it even more, especially when we enter to the house of the Lord. They show us enthusiasm and all their little ungodly things but we should show us show ourselves enthusiasm when we come into the house of the Lord let me read this scripture it calls for us to obey he says oh come let us sing to the Lord let us show joyfully shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation let us come before his presence with thanksgiving let us shout joyfully to him with psalms and he tells us why for the Lord is a great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands form the dry land. Therefore, let us come and worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. For we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. You ever think about what Israel did when they first heard that? I'm sure they they came into the tabernacle bowing down. And, but sometimes we take it so lightly. We just take it for granted that we're blessed because we come to church this morning. But it's something God laid on my heart this morning. We will be a lot of things. But the more important thing that God has commanded us to do, we do, but we don't do it openly. He said, let us come together. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for another privilege you've allowed us to come to worship and to praise you. We thank you for all who have come. We thank you for all who are watching. We thank you for all who are listening. We pray, God, that uh, this service will be encouraging to all of us who come. There will be enthusiasm for those of us who love and praise your name. And Lord, when we leave, <clears throat> leave this place, we pray, God, that we remember to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray for the man of God who will preach your word. We pray that someone will be turned around. Someone will, will repent. Someone will know that he spent some time working with you. Thank you, Father, for everyone who has come this morning. We pray for our musicians. We pray for our worship worshipers we just pray god that you will be in our midst he guide us lead us that we'll be inspired to do things for you even even after we leave this place it's in jesus name we do pray and we ask it all amen amen our announcements do we have any announcements oh, okay
Marvin Wise has praise report. Marvin Wise has, um, as he recovers from successful kidney transplant surgery, we uh, we have a notation here. Marvin Wise has been released from St. Barnabas Hospital. Amen. Some of you may not know he has been blessed with a new kidney. Let us continue keeping him in our prayers. Mario Williams Jr. is recovering from successful knee surgery. Mario, would you like to make a praise report? To come up with a praise report? Let's give Mario a hand as he comes. You stay there. I'll give it to you. I don't want you to walk up the steps. Come on over here. Good morning, church. Um, so it all started when I was at camp at, and I was learning, you know, like children should be. Um, and we were going outside and, you know, for some reason there's water in the grass and it's very slippery. And because it, it, um, there was a thunderstorm yesterday and, you know, there, that's probably what happened. And I, and the puddle is like right next to the bleachers. And I was running really fast and I ended up slipping and I hit my leg and, you know, I was crying like, someone, someone call someone or something. And she was like, I am, I am like, hurry up. I'm like, yeah. So um, when I finally got to the hospital, you know, it was a miracle that, you know, the Lord was able to pick me up and, you know, just bring me there. And, you know, I was scared at first. I mean, it was like, I don't want the, I don't want the ambulance. I want my mommy. So, but I ended up going in there and, you know, it was, it was pretty bad. You know, it was like a huge cut and they were like, yeah, you're definitely gonna have to get stitches. Um, but my mother wanted me to go like to a children's hospital and, you know, that couldn't work out. So we ended up going to a hospital with, like, where they're usually adults that have to get their surgery done. Um, uh, it, was, it wasn't it was as bad. Um, the doctor said that, you know, I would end up going to another hospital, the one that my mother wanted me to go to. And because, only because um, they, the doctor was checking out my knee and, she said that, you know, I'm going to have to go to another hospital where they can really cure this up because I ended up um, cutting a little bit of my uh, tendon. And, um, you know, that's like your muscle. Your muscle is like a rubber band. And I, I cut a little bit of that. And it was like bent. So they didn't want to put the stitches in, you know, because they wanted to do it the proper way. So um, I had to wait a little longer. Um, which is pretty annoying because I had to wait two hours a little bit. Um, but when we finally got to the other hospital, you know, I was pretty glad. But then again, I had to numb it all over again, which I wasn't really glad. The lady, you know, she didn't really numb it. She just went right ahead and just looked through my stuff. I was like, ow, like, can you please numb it? Like, like how am I, I'm not that strong now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, when I finally got through the surgery, it was really a blessing that the Lord, I was, I went through this much and, you know, I was really grateful to have a family that was there for me and, you know, took care of me and I've come so far to, you know, be here and, you know, I'm healed now and, you know, I'm, I'm glad for everyone to, you know, support me and, my mother also gave me like a bear that had the cast on too. And uh, it was from Builder's Bear and they're allowed to say things. And when I first got it, I thought I was gonna sing a song because that's what they usually do. But when I was like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. <laughs> um, but I was really grateful, yeah. Come on, let's give a little Mario, Glorio Lord. I like a preacher, doesn't he? I ain't gonna be with you, I ain't gonna be with y'all in about a minute. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Mario. That was a powerful re prayer. Uh, that was a powerful, uh, what do you call it? Testimony. That was a powerful testimony. We adults don't even know that. We won't do that lots of times. You be sick and never say a word. Thank y'all for praying for me. You got anything to say? No, just thank you. You know, nice going, young man. You you, you can either be a politician, teacher, or preacher. I think you're going to be a preacher. Amen? Come on, church. Y'all got to be. Praise God. He can, we need some young preachers here. We got enough politicians. We got enough teachers. No, we ain't got enough teachers. But we need, we need some more young preachers. Okay. I think that's, uh, oh, Jameel Holland. Birthday, 730. We're going to sing happy birthday to Jamil. Is he here? Well, he's probably watching. Jamil, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You. Amen. Announcements. The men's ministry is well into reading Tom Evan, Tony Evans' Kingdom Man and are doing so throughout the summer on Wednesdays. Need the book or more information? Contact Deacon Nate Penny. Church picnic update. Our original date has been changed. More important, more information will be provided as received at church picnic. Let's celebrate Reverend Mears and family as her great grandson, grandson of Priscilla, Priscilla Mears gets married. She is inviting all to attend. Uh, let me read the invitation here. It says, together with their love as as Hayne Williams and Justin Ferrer cordially invite you to their wedding, August 21st, 2021, First Park Baptist Church, 2 p.m., uh, 315 West 7th Street, Plainfield, New Jersey. Reception held at Clinton Hill Event Hall, uh, 1218 Elizabeth Avenue, Newark, New Jersey. Registry on Walmart. Azim Williams, monetary gifts accepted. Got a praise report, prayer request, something to celebrate. Don't keep it to yourself. Email church office, first park at gmail.com so we may rejoice. Pray and celebrate with you. I think that's all for our announcements. Let us begin our worship with our men's chorus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Hallelujah.
technical difficulties this morning. <laughs> Come on, give God a hand, praise. Give God a hand, praise. praise.
your name be glorified. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him shall not perish. They have everlasting life. Great is 
the measure of our Father's love. You're so high, you can't measure it. Great is the measure of our Father's love. It's so wide, you can't even measure it. Great is the measure of our Father's love. It's so deep, you can't measure it. Great is the measure of our Father's love. He's real. Jesus is real to me. Now, y'all believe that? All right, then. Let's praise the Lord like we know he's real. The word says, stand on your feet. Put your hands together. Uh-huh. Some of y'all said he's real. Y'all still sitting there. Okay. You don't feel good this morning, but that's all right. Those of us who know he's real, we can put our hands together and give him joy for prayer. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. slow it down you get tired steps are slow I love to praise him mm. Mm. amen I think it's our you know that one thing. Well, okay, this song been on my heart. <laughs> Yesterday we were practicing, and Larry was like, Lady, I know you always got a song. Yeah. But he had something, just something been on my mind. Sort of going through a transition period. Everybody talking about transition, you think about dying and transitioning. But it's just a new chapter in my life. Got a couple of weeks left of work before I'm gonna call it quits and people are coming by. And they're saying goodbye because they're going to different locations starting this week. So I might never see him again. I'm just thinking about my 
parents, they're going through what they're going through. And mother, times of trouble and, and pain, she just always has a song, Another Day's Journey. It's another day's journey, and I'm glad. I'm oh, I'm glad. I'm glad about it. I'm so glad. I'm glad about it. It's just another day's journey, and I'm glad. I'm glad about it. Oh,
message from the Lord. Hallelujah. A message unto you I'll give. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live. My brother live. Look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look It's full of love, hallelujah, a message of my friend for you, is a message from above, hallelujah, he's a sin and I know it's true. to you, hallelujah, eternal life your soul shall have, if you only look to him, hallelujah, look to Jesus, he alone can save. church. Let us pray. In Revelations, it talks about worship. And we're here, oh Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are so worthy, oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. 
For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. We just thank you, Lord, and we worship and praise you. We thank you, Jesus, for our relationship with you. And we just pray that we will be led by your spirit and follow you in all that we say and do. We thank you for this body of believers here at First Park. We just pray, Lord, for those who are listening and those who are here. We just ask much grace and mercy for the speaker this morning. Just open our ears to hear that we may be what you would have us to be. We pray for the sick. We just thank you for the answers to prayer that we've had this week. We just pray right now for Marvin and Reverend Mears and Reverend Peterson and for R Rigo, who is here this morning following his knee surgery. Just give us all your grace and mercy, Lord. Traveling mercy to those who are away and for those who are coming home. Hear us, we pray in Jesus' name. up this morning. That's the most. This morning, I'll be reading from Deuteronomy 15, verse 10. You shall give to him freely, and your heart shall not be grudgingly when you give to him. Because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and all your undertakings. Uh, I guess we reflect on that as we all came in. We all saw the new parking lot. That was, uh, that was beautiful, looked great. God gave to us, and then in turn, we gave to the church, and then we gave it to the guy, Mr. Dempsey, who paved our parking lot. <laughs> and hopefully, Mr. Dempsey will go off to church where he worships, and he'll give it back to God. And it'll be an endless circle, endless circle. That endless circle has been going on here since 1818, and we wish to continue it. And today, basically what I came to say is we have a lot of ways to give. We have fish and loaves. We have the prison ministry. We have... Uh, offerings, different ways we can all give. We can contribute our time, our efforts, and different things along those lines. It's not just a matter of monetary giving. Uh, it's most remind, we can give it. And also, we have a, thanks to technology, we can also be, those that aren't with us, through Zoom and other networks, you can come and you can give on our app. You can church as we're from seat. Uh, 24 access, it's a secure network, and it's a blessing for all of us. So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for all the many blessings that you receive. Thank you for giving. Thank you for allowing us to give. Thanks for in one endless cycle we all give and we receive the gifts. In Christ's name we pray, amen. If the ushers can come forward. Say bless, bless, say bless, bless, bless.
cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Sister Karen Thomas from our fellowship, I mean scholarship committee, and followed by Deacon Nate Kenny. Good morning, church. Good morning, everybody online. Amen. This is a wonderful time right now. Um, I get a lot of a lot of joy at this moment. So, on behalf of the scholarship committee. That would be Geraldine McClendon, Nate Penny, Jacqueline Jones, Holly Ray, Carnegie, and myself. We are pleased to award this fine young man our recipient for the year. With the love of God, the tremendous raising of his parents, Tristan, his life speaks for itself. They put 150% into raising him. And that goes with obedience, committed, He's steadfast, he's respectful, he's supportive of his family, he's supportive of his first part family, and he continues to love God. I know his mom is proud, and I know his dad is still proud that his love continues on, even though his father's going on to glory, but, continue, but Tristan is making his dad proud. Through the pandemic, he didn't waver. He came consistently, I mean, He's a fine example of what we should be doing. A lot of us, well, me too, thank you. <laughs> but he's a fine example. He's an inspiration to a lot. Wow, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm just so proud of this young lady, this young man. And I know people in the first park are just as proud. A lot of people have a lot of, that, they, that they take on and they do with him and that's a wonderful thing. Also, I'm proud to say that first park has a graduation rate of our students, our young people that go to college, 99% graduate from college. That's, that's like, that's like awesome. So that's like really so proud. I mean, you know, thank God, you know. So at this time, I will present Tristan with his award and then Tristan's going to give us some words and then that'll conclude this portion. Tristan, you're welcome. Hey, can't, no little kid anymore, can't squeeze through there. Like Tristan, the Men's Fellowship of First Park Baptist Church, would like to present you with this gift. Um, we're so proud of you, and we just got together and we said we definitely have to do something for you because you've just grown so much in this church. We all remember when you were just up to our hip and you would just watch and see what was going on. And anytime we needed a hand, you were always there, whether it was something to be done in the church or if it was playing the drums, you always stepped in and filled the gap. And like I said, we're proud of you. I mean, I remember when you used to tease me about playing the bass the guitar when you were learning how to play drums. Well, you mastered the drums, but I ain't mastered the bass. And I, you've gone on to college and two degrees, I understand. Besides your regular BA, you're going for a master's at the same time. I mean, you are awesome. Your father right now is just looking down and he's just smiling. I know your mother's proud and your brothers and sisters are proud as well. So. From the Men's Fellowship of First Park Baptist Church, we present you with this gift and we hope that you can use it to do something positive because we you always do. Thank you. Good 
Good morning, First Park. I just wanted to say thank everybody, the scholarship committee, everybody who's been in my life recently and even before the pandemic. And I want to thank you for your continued prayers and your blessings. And I really hope to come back and see you guys every week. And thank you guys so much for everything you've done for me. Amen. That's a grateful heart right there. That's, that's gratefulness. That's grateful right there. Ain't used to singing them. I guess y'all looking at me, all oh, this big piece of paper up here. Huh? All right, daughter, don't say, don't say a word. Don't say, don't say a word. My homeboy, Bill Withers, may not recognize this song because I read change a little bit so that folks might lean on him. Scripture says, I tell them, oh, how sweet to walk in the spiritual way. Oh, how bright the path that grows from day to day. Mm. With him, I do dread. I do not dread the fear. Blessed as I lean on my Lord, so near, lean on Him. I don't want y'all to get that mixed up with lean on me, but you know the melody, y'all can hum along with me. Situation, they don't understand. We all 
all your cares up on the mighty one. When the burdens are gone, you're gonna need Jesus to lean on. If there is a load you cannot bear. When you need a hand, we all need a savior to lean on. There is no situation he don't understand. We all need a savior to lean on. Lean on him. When trials come, cast all your care upon the Just call on him, call on him. Now when you need a friend, call him, call him. Call him. Now he's a friend to call the end. Him. Call, call him. him, call him, call him, call him in the morning, call him in the evening, call him in the midnight. Let the church say, man. Let the church say, man, again. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We can do that again. And I said, uh, if that was for me, that would be all right. But let's give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, let's give God. He the one that woke me up and he the one that allow you to put one foot in front of the other. He the one put food on the table, clothes on your back. He the one that get your eyes to see and, and, and ears to hear and a tongue to talk. Amen. Our worship is connected with our intimacy. And the more you're intimate with God, the more you don't mind letting people know. See, when you love somebody, you don't care who know about it. Amen. We honor the spirit of the Lord who is the head of our life, the author, the finisher of our faith, the preserver of our soul, the one that's able to keep us, the one that's able to keep us from falling. That reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Um, we honor him who is the head of our life. Uh, we thank God for another day's journey and I'm glad about it. Uh, we give honor to our worship leader, amen, Deacon Larry Lawson, and the Deacon Board and the official staff, the absence of the First Lady, and to all of my father's children and the young people and the scholarship uh, committee that honored this young man. And whether you know it or not, um, you have put a strong impact on his heart today because 
when you stand by a young man that needs direction, he falls on what you guys invested in when trials and tribulations and tests will come in his life when nobody's looking. I wish I could amen right there. Because if Satan can get the young male, amen, the young lady doesn't have a chance. Amen. But as long as the church is there to give the young man a strong foundation of who he is, where he need to go and who God is. There's a sense of purpose to follow his passion, to walk into his purpose of kingdom relationship with God. Amen. We thank God for our musicians and uh, we thank God for all of you that are here in the house of prayer this morning. We thank God for all our visitors and the friends. We thank God for Brother Percy and his son, amen, Butterman. We thank God for um, these men that are singing out of their heart this morning. I, I, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed just to be a part of that great singing. It was almost a concert, amen. It's nothing like being in the house of prayer, nothing like singing songs unto God, amen. Amen. I want to sing a, uh, I guess a little hymn or whatever, uh, and then we'll move on with the service. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to come back and share with you. We were unable to be here last month, and the Lord allowed us to, to be here today, and I'm so grateful for that opportunity. Shine. Upon thy breast, oh, thou everyone lay down and, and rest, shine on, on me, Lord, shine. Oh, 
From the lighthouse shine on on me. Let the church say yes. Come on, help me out. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. I just wanted to go back to the roots. Amen. Where we learned the hymns and stood on the shoulders of those hymns. Amen. Our scripture is going to come from St. Matthew 20 and 20, even though it says Mark 10, 35, and I think 39. It's still all the same topic. But we're going to go with Matthew 20, 20 to verse 28. And just to back up our scriptures, we're going to go to St. Luke 9, 23, to 25, and I'm going to try to tie it in with the cost of discipleship. Father God, we come, we pray that you be with us for the moment, that you allow us to tamper with your word. Pray now that you bless us. Pray now that you keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew 20, 20 to 28. And I love that when I talked about the scripture, they just stood up. So that's, that's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, what will thou? She said unto him, grant that these my two sons may sit the one on the right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. But Jesus said, answered and said, ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup? that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. And they said unto him, we are able. And he, and he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand, it's not mine to give, say it's not mine to give. Come on, say it like you mean it. It's not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. I'm going to stop right there at verse 24. I want to talk about the cost of discipleship the cost of discipleship i thought 
that the Lord allowed me to look at this lesson because this lesson will be a great lesson that we need to grasp and grab in 2021. Coming out of the pandemic, the cost of discipleship and going to church, worship, and service have con confused some church goers to understand what the work of Christianity is all about. So the Lord will allow me to stop by on my way to heaven to tell you that some of us, we get it misunderstood about church, Christianity, and the work of ministry. And in this lesson, we find that the sons of Zebedee, which is uh, 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 Mary's sister, children, on behalf of their relationship, they decide to pull rank on the other disciples. And if you read the text, and if anyone know the historicity of the text, you always will find Peter, James, and John. On Mount Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John. The young man that died and Jesus rose him from the dead, it was Peter, James, and John. Anytime Jesus went to do something great, it was those three that represented the disciples. But yet here in Matthew 20 and 20 and Mark 10, you find Zebedee's uh, family and the disciples, James and John, going to Jesus on a hidden agenda. I just need two amens and I'll, I'll kind of push it a little long. Uh, they come to him on a hidden agenda. The hidden agenda, and we all need to be honest with ourselves, because if we was in that situation, we probably would have done the same thing. They goes and ask Jesus, can you do me a favor? When you get to the kingdom, let one of my sons sit on the right and one of my sons sit on the left. Now let's put a quote in the meter. These are the same disciples that are walking with Jesus down on earth that Jesus says, if any man come after me, let him what? Deny himself, pick up a cross and follow me. But they want to erase them words and get to the kingdom without doing the work. And I find myself looking at this text because a lot of people ready to go to heaven, don't want to die, don't want to serve, and barely want to come to worship. Y'all didn't catch that, so I'm going to hit rewind. People want to go to heaven, don't want to die, yet they call themselves Christians, don't want to serve, and don't want to come and worship. But yet they say they are disciples and followers of Christ when to be a part of the Christian uh, family and part of the kingdom which they were talking about you must understand in the text, it says uh, the one that's willing to do the will will be the chief servant. And then the one that do the least 
Well, you already know. But if you look at the text, we find ourselves there and we need to understand to be a Christian or to be a disciple, it costs you. It interrupts your family feud shows. It interrupts your plan because of the pledge of the cost to follow Jesus. If any man will come after me, which means it's a personal desire. And with that personal desire, mean that you love him more than these. But the truth be told, we have to look at our calendar to see if it fits in. Let me look and see if I am available. And God and Jesus Christ is watching to see, will you be willing to interrupt you for the cost of the kingdom? Now watch this. In order to be a part of the church first, you got to understand that the kingdom was established before the church. Matthew 4, 5, and 6 talk about the characters of the kingdoms that when Matthew 16 show up, you're dealing with the conception of the church. So in order to get ready to do church work, you have to be fully in to be a part of the kingdom. And then you can't want a position in the kingdom like reservations if you're not willing to do the work. I just need two amens because I'm going somewhere with this. You need to understand to be a disciple, it's relationship and intimacy. The reason why I'm a disciple, because I realize, and the reason why a lot of us don't appreciate salvation, because uh, we really don't realize we really try to patronize how lost we were. But I'm going to tell you, I was a sinner, undone, and needed a savior. And that savior came and saved me. And it was nothing that I'd done so well or so great. It was a, the love that he had for me for purpose and ministry. So with that passion that he gave me, I have passion for him. Now, do we always get it right? No, but look at this lesson. He goes on and Jesus tries to tell these disciples that it's going to cost. He is going to cost. He says, says in Matthew, uh, grant them, my two sons, to sit on your right hand and on your left when you get to the kingdom. How do you get to the kingdom when we still have ministry on earth? unless you're trying to get reservation. And a lot of people feel like we're in church. Uh, you know, we, if we don't patronize you, you won't come. If we don't call your name, you don't feel like you're worth nothing in the church, but you have to understand it's not about us. When you make the course of discipleship, it says uh, you have to be willing to kill you. If any man will come out to let him deny himself. So if you can get you out of the way, God can use you or use us. But the reason why God can't use us because sometimes we try to blame it on other people, but we're in our own way. So he says, give us uh, uh, to sit on the right hand and left hand. And Jesus as it says, you know not what you ask. You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized? And look what they say. Unto him, we're able. No, you're not. The reason why you're not able 
And because it wasn't your journey or your cup to drink. The assignment was we needed a savior and in the cup that's in the garden, in the garden of Gethsemane, there was what you call a dualistic fight of humanity and divinity inside Jesus. The divinity side wanted to drink the cup. The humanity side said, let this cup pass for me because there was so much in the cup that only a savior could drink. It was drugs in the cup, murder in the cup, lying in the cup, deception in the cup. Y'all gonna pray with me? It, it was all of those things in the cup that a lot of you can't handle because there are some people now here in the church won't forgive people for something that happened 20 years ago. But in that cup that Jesus drunk, there was some stuff in there that we say right now, I ain't ready to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> In that cup was some stuff that he says, can you drink? And they said, yes, no, you can't. We can't, we, that's why we needed Jesus. That's the reason why we needed a savior because there's some stuff we still are working on. So in the cup, he says, can you be baptized of the baptism? Now here it is, he only taking water. But see, there's a transformation of being baptized in the spirit. Because to be baptized in the spirit, that means that now you walk in the spirit, see in the spirit, live in the spirit, worship in the spirit, that when you're walking in the spirit, that the spirit takes over this container. So he says to them, he says to them, but it shall be given. It's not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. Now, what that means is we working out our own soul salvation. That's why I, I, I come from an era where uh, they would say it this way. Six months to mind your business and six months to leave somebody else's alone because it's an era of salvation. And soteriology is the study of how to allow salvation to be a process in your life, that the process in your life, you don't have time to look at somebody else's life. Because we're all working it out. So that's why we need to praise God for employing grace and mercy. Because if we didn't have grace and mercy, we would have been judged, stoned, and deaf a long time ago. So in the lesson, these disciples go to Jesus on the down low. And then the other 10 is looking at the two sideways. You know that's how we do in church. I can't believe they did that. I've been here longer than them. I can't believe they did that. And see, the maturity part of it is let God handle it. See, when we allow our emotions and we allow our feelings and our opinions to get in the way in church, that's where the church problem comes in. Because if you ever hear somebody say, well, I feel this way. Well, you know, I don't think it's right. And it may not be right. But see, this is where the cause of discipleship comes in because Jesus said that they hated me. They're going to hate you. Jesus said that you will be persecuted. And a lot of people look at persecution from the outer, outer walls of the kingdom or Christianity or the church. 
but you need to understand we have more conflict in the church because we don't know when to fight, who to fight, and what the fight is all about. So therefore we war and not warring in the spirit because if we're walking in the spirit, we wouldn't be fighting our brother and sister. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me here. So here in this lesson, the 10 says, I can't believe this. The cause of discipleship is not about a seat. A lot of people say, that's my seat. Come on now. I just need a little help here. I'll be out here. Y'all can make it long or y'all can make it short. It's up to y'all. A lot of people get in the church and be like, that's my seat. I've been sitting in that seat since 1972. It's not about the seat. Matter of fact, if you've been in church since 1972 and you don't have no fruit on the vine, and fruit on the vine means somebody to look up to you, somebody to want to be like you, and somebody to want to carry on what you're doing. And if you don't have that, you got to understand you got a problem. Because Jesus said, my fruit, uh, he says that your fruit should remain. Which means if you put the work in, somebody going to say, I see what you're doing. I want to be like you. And when you're gone, I carry the work. That's how the continue of the kingdom building goes on. I ain't going to get too many amens. I might as well preach it. He says, he says, they were moved with indignation against the two brothers. Indignation means I'm upset. I'm mad. And you got to understand that discipleship is not who's on first. Who's on second. Discipleship, if any man will come after me, go to Luke 9 and I'm done. Luke 9 and 23, Jesus says, this is the true test. It's not about a seat. It's not about you calling me president of the usher board, president of the deacon board. Uh, uh, All of these things, when he says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Deny means... If it wasn't for salvation in my life, I I realized it was nothing but him that saved me. So I'm nothing without him. Paul says I'm dung. So he says, deny yourself. Why are you denying yourself? He says, uh, take up the cross. The cross is heavy. The cross is a burden but the cross is a blessing. Why? Because you're following after Christ. We may never reach the perfection of him, but we strive. And the reason why we were never because of the that sin in the garden, that here we are denying, so pick up the cross. The cross is loving your enemies. The cross is self Listness and sacrificing for the kingdom, not for the church. A lot of people said, if it wasn't for the church, I wouldn't do this. No, it should be a part of the kingdom first. And then you represent the church. The church is the agent where sinners that can't see Christ can come in and see the kingdom. So he says here, pick up your cross, not just on Sunday. And the reason why people don't have a worship on Sunday because they live crazy Monday through Saturday. So if you listen to boom, chicka, bop, chicka, boom, chicka, bop, and you listen to all this stuff, you got all this in your spirit, it's hard to raise your hand because you're double-minded. Your spirit is double. 
But if you've been feeding your spirit with prayer, been feeding your spirit around prayer partners, and you've been loving God and thanking God that when you saw the sun rise in the east and he's, he gets in noonday and then it's set, and then you know that who wouldn't serve a God like this? That when I was sick, he healed me. When I when I was hungry, he fed me. And when I was outdoors, he brought me in. And when I was naked, he closed me. And in that intimacy, by the time you get to worship, worship is so high that those that don't worship will be getting to worship because of the atmosphere. So a lot of people think when they go to church, they doing God a favor. And they doing the church a favor. Well, you know I really wasn't going to come, but it was my Sunday to say. I, re I really, I really, I really wasn't going to come, but, you know, somebody got to count the money today and such and such went on vacation and such in the hospital. So I need to be here to count the money. And it ain't about you. Daily means that God wants to put an impact on a community of believers. That in the name of Jesus, not only do you have authority, but you have power. And there's a difference between using the authority and using your power. And we don't activate that because we haven't been doing the daily act. And a lot of people think it takes draining people with oil and praying all day. No. The authority is, if you walk in a relationship, you already have the authority. And if you walk with authority, he released the power. Because he says in Matthew 16, when the conception of the church, he says, whatsoever you bind, I bind. Because of your daily relationship will take you into your authority and power. Yeah, you ain't going to pray with me. I'm going to go ahead about my business. He says, follow me. Follow me is where a lot of us have a problem. Because we don't mind being a disciple, but we need to understand it costs. Studying the word of God after 35 years, I've lost some things, but I also gained some things. Preaching the word of God, 35 years, there's some things I couldn't attend. Family events, I couldn't go because of the cost of disciples. And you need to understand that if you're going to be a part of the kingdom, you got to understand that the only hands God has is yours. The only feet God have is yours. And the only way the word can get to the lost is through you. Have I got a witness here? And you need to understand that there is a price that you must pay to be in uh, the army of the law. And uh, I want you to know I, I made a vow to the Lord. And I told him I won't take it back. Uh, yet uh, in this course of discipleship, yes, uh, I see here that uh, we want to get to heaven without leaving a mark on earth. Have I got me a witness here? Well, to follow Jesus, he loved his enemies. To follow Jesus as a disciple, he 
forgave and prayed for those that needed a savior. Have I got me a witness here? And as I look at the cost of discipleship, the disciples failed in Matthew 17. There was a man that brought his son to Jesus, uh, to Jesus' disciples. Have I got me a witness here? Have I got me a witness here? And uh, the boy was a lunatic, and the boy will cut himself and fall in the fire, and the boy will hurt himself. But Jesus said that the man brought him to his disciples. And then when Jesus heard about the situation, Jesus said, bring the boy to me. Have I got me a witness here? I'm going to tell you about the cause of discipleship. The boy was healed the very hour. And Jesus said uh, to the disciples, you perverse uh, generation. Uh, and they said, how? Why we couldn't do this? And Jesus said, some things uh, come by fasting and praying. Uh, have I got me a witness here? Yes. Uh, if you're going to be a disciple, uh, you got to be willing uh, to be in the middle uh, to interrupt uh, what the devil is doing. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? Your prayer life uh, will show up uh, when you need it the most. Uh, your fasting and your prayer and your relationship uh, will show up to make an impact uh, in this Hellenistic world. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? <laughs> because there's people uh, that need uh, your hand. Uh, there's people that need uh, your prayer. Uh, there's people that need a kind word. Uh, have I got me a witness here? Uh, but if you uh, don't move uh, yourself uh, out of the way, uh, you can't see uh, that God uh, want to use you. Uh, he want to use uh, your mouth uh, to quote scriptures. Uh, he want to use uh, your hands uh, to help somebody. Uh, he want to use uh, your heart uh, to love uh, the heartless one. Uh, have I got me a witness here? Uh, I'm going to close uh, here now. Uh, but is there any uh, here uh, want to be a straight uh, disciple for Jesus? Uh, do you want to be uh, the one to make a difference? Uh, do you want to be the one uh, to love your enemies? Uh, do you want to be the one uh, to keep the kingdom uh, together? Uh, if you want to be the one. <laughs> It costs you. If you're going to be a disciple, it's going to cost. And it's more than just coming to church on Sunday morning. It's more than wearing a suit or a dress or a hat. It's more than chairman and president. But he says, the ones that's willing to do the chief work, that's the one that I can use. And you got to know that anything you do for Christ will last. And if you lose some stuff on the way, the Lord will give it back. Have I got a witness? Have I got a witness? Stand to your feet. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. You need to hold to his hand, God. I want to be quiet. You ought to be your hope. Things turn, turn out. You better hold. Come on, to God. Come on, put your hands together. I want to be quiet. Oh, you better hold. Come on, you know. Y'all don't want to help me.
me, I'm going to use you, baby. Come on, come on, come on, sing with me. Hey, you know, God, what a mic. You better be, come on, you sung before. Hope for pain to turn. Oh, you better hope. Come on, you want to sing? To God, come change your hand. See, oh, you better hope. You know God Oh, you better hold Come on, you know God's unchanging name. Oh, oh, you are oh, oh, to his name. You know God. Oh, you better be your face. Turn on, you better hold. Come on, put your hands here. Now I'm gonna put a little quartet on it. I'm gonna put a little quartet. Oh. Church is open. Come by letter. Candidate. Christian experience. This is God's church by ownership. It gets be ours by membership. It's ours by stewardship. Is there one that wanna do the cost of discipleship? Understand it's a cost, but it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Is there one? Is there one that want to rededicate themselves and understand it's not about us, but it's about Christ. It's about Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands together. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. I want to be like y'all when I get older. Thank you so much. Give God a hand clap of praise. At this time, we're going to turn it back into the hands of our brothers that are in charge. Give God a hand clap of praise. I want to... I want to do a little bit of this. There's power in the name of Jesus, but they said do the benediction and let the church say amen. But I want to, I just feel like I need to say this. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus Break every chain Break every chain Break every chain 
I just want to say it one more time and then I'm going to move out the way. There is power in the name Jesus. There is power in the name Jesus. Whatever you're going through, he could break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. There's an army rising rise up. gonna break he's gonna break whatever's holding your back he's gonna break every chain every chain father God we come we thank you for what our eyes have seen our ears have heard our heart have felt bless your people you know what they need Touch them right where they are. Touch the hidden parts that they don't want nobody to know about. Touch, move, and deliver. God, we need you now. Bless your people. Now we come to the closing of this worship service. Walk with us, talk with us, stand by us, lead us, and guide us. We need you. We thank you for the chairman of the Dean Board. Heal. We ask that you heal the broken heart from this church. We ask that you, God, move in a mighty way. Let your word saturate our minds and our hearts for intimacy with you. Lord, we love you. Walk with us, talk with us, stand by us, lead us and guide us. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of the sweet communion. Rest, rule, and abide with your people here now and forevermore. Open your mouth and let the church say amen. Come on, let's sing it. Let the church say Seal your blessing. Let the church say, God, come on, say it one more time. Let the church say, lift your voice and seal your blessing. Let the church say, let the church say, amen. Let the church say, God bless you. God bless you. Go in peace and love. Know that the Lord loves you, so do I.